Okay. Can you see the presentation on the screen? Okay, we can start. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. I am Salome Yobadze from Georgia. I'm Program Director of Partnership for Education and Communication with Local Civil Society Organization. I'm also a Master of Public Administration and Public Policy. And my sphere of expertise is civic engagement mechanisms, especially in its local government area. Uh, today, I would like to talk with you about artificial intelligence and civic participation. Uh, to overview our today's topic, I will make a very brief introduction of what is artificial intelligence and how it's linked with civic participation mechanisms. And then I would like to overview also a little theoretical framework regarding deliberative democracy, civic participation, and artificial intelligence. And then we will move to artificial intelligence in elections and I powered voting systems. And then we will discuss some case studies of public opinion analysis. How can it be done through AI power too? And then we will move to community involvement platforms, uh, share brief conclusions from the research I have done for this lecture. And at the end, we will have a question and answer session. And I really hope that you will use this opportunity to raise your, your hand or write in the chat your questions, recommendations, comments, as I really see this meeting as an uh, opportunity of mutual learning and experience sharing. So I think we will have really very fruitful discussion at the end as well. As for learning objectives, I really believe that I, after the end of the, our session, participants will be informed on interlinkages between artificial intelligence, uh, deliberative democracy, and civic participation, different types of high powered civic participation mechanisms, such as voting systems, public opinion analysis, and different community environment platforms. And then also, I would like to use this floor to discuss what civil society organizations or some in initiative groups can do to ensure right-based, high-powered civic participation. Total time, estimated time is nearly 60 minutes. As for in introduction, we can say that the role of artificial intelligence has been really very rapidly increasing as a tool for civil participation in modern day democracies. As we see, artificial intelligence can help us in different ways. It can be either public informa information dissemination processes, making informed choices by citizens, contribute to their meaningful engagement in the democratic processes, or either it can be facilitate better decision making by the government. Uh, despite this pos positive potential impact for citizens to access government data, allowing them to better understand the political process, the rights and responsibilities to make more informed and responsive decisions, the role of artificial intelligence in civic participation is still being very hit to debate subject and focus. Even in modern day democracies, we really see that uh, especially in low uh, internet media literacy groups or vulnerable communities, high-powered algorithms can become a very negative tool to target and manipulate public opinion, contribute to disinformation, propaganda, or dissemination of really very fake reality and influence even election results. In this regard, our study uh, of the relationship between the Artificial intelligence and civic participation is really very essential. This lecture really sums up and your key findings from the study I have done for the preparation and the different participants' understanding of artificial intelligence and civic participation. Uh, the key purpose of our study that I can show was that to reveal the relationship between the artificial intelligence and civic participation, uh, artificial intelligence as a tool for solving deliberation and 
massive participation dilemma in deliberative democracies. This dilemma is a really very long term and it uh, continues uh, for centuries, we can say, that how we can ensure mass civic participation and at the same time, meaningful deliberation uh, of arguments. Uh, we can discuss together how artificial intelligence can be leveraged to increase civic engagement, including through high-powered politic systems, public opinion analysis, and community involvement platforms, identify together opportunities and the challenges that arise in this context. Uh, to achieve these goals, we can identify several tasks. First was to analyze interlinkages between, uh, as I already mentioned, artificial intelligence, deliberative democracy, and civic participation. The next was to explore different possibilities of applying artificial intelligence as a tool for civic participation uh, and to various uh, powered opportunities. And the third, but not least, was to study the impact of artificial intelligence on the interaction of citizens and governments, including the level of participation of citizens in decision-making processes. Uh, to, for, as for methodology, uh, to adjust the goal of the research, the following method was used. First was desk review. Um, I have identified relevant data sources assess the quality of data and identify gaps where further research may be really needed to identify more uh, concrete research questions. And also I have done some of the literature review, which involved really in-depth analysis of available li literature on artificial intelligence and civic participation, including several academic journals, articles, reports of international development programs such as UNDP, USAID, World Bank, Council of Europe, and also some reports of civil society organizations, as well as academic publications. And also I have identified and analyzed different cases which I can introduce also today. And uh, uh, the study, uh, to sum up, really reveals the role of artificial intelligence as a key driver to cut civic participation and deliberation process in democracies. As we see, high-powered solutions really improve the provision of public services and enable the growing engagement of citizens in the decision-making processes including the provision of proactive and personalized services, resulting in a more responsible, accountable, uh, transparent, and, and really effective public sector. As a study basis on deliberative democracy theory, political theory is a main theoretical framework and analyzes, facilitate, fact-checking, and data clustering opportunities of artificial intelligence in deliberation and mass civic participation. As for this uh, theoretical framework as a political uh, theory, just to define what we mean by deliberative democracy, deliberative democracy really envisions a society where collective decisions are made based on inclusive and mutually respectful deliberation. But the key question which we can ask is how artificial intelligence can be used to support and enhance the democratic process through the synthesis of deliberation and really mass civic participation. <clears throat> As theory believes democracy should be based on informed, respectful and inclusive public deliberation. While democratic deliberation is supposed to be very inclusive of all members uh, of the demos on equal grounds, two uh, antagonistic factors arise in this area as a dilemma. Deliberation on the one hand and mass participation on the other hand. A study revealed artificial intelligence can contribute solving this uh, dilemma and scale deliberation to masses. And there are three key pathways which we have identified during our research. First is facilitation. Artificial intelligence is a cost-effective, impartial moderator and facilitator of group discussions provided those are conducted online. 
Also, another uh, pathway can be fact checking fashion of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence provides accurate information in real time uh, for the human deliberators and serving generally as a basic fact checker in deliberative settings. And the third pathway is data clustering. Artificial intelligence can help cluster ideas and weight arguments in an organized way so that the intersecting contribution of large amounts of people can actually be reduced to a manageable amount of uh, content. Uh, for cases, I have summed up different cases of each uh, clusters and pathways of parties. I list this is moderator chatbot for civic discourse developed by Stanford University. At Stanford University, there is the Liberative Democracy Laboratory, which has at first uh, piloted a moderator based on artificial intelligence and named it uh, on behalf of the uh, author of this algorithm, Alice So, the person who gave it her voice. <clears throat> Alice facilitates online conversations among groups of seven to eight people. She ensures welcoming, keeping time, and distributing speaking rights equ equitably and content moderation, clicking insults, advertisement, and gibberish, and either removing them or signaling them to a human supervisor. Algorithm also has an ability of upgrading uh, uh, to a fuller range of human-like abilities to maintain a good and productive flow of conversations among a large group of people. As mentioned on the Stanford University uh, Human Centered Artificial Intelligence page, the conversation follows a protocol for civic discussion created by Stanford Center for Deliberative Democracy and relies on the automatic moderator designed in collaboration with a team from Stanford's management. This goal is to encourage civic discourse around important policy questions. Uh, uh, this uh, tool is widely used for dif uh, different groups. Uh, for example, in Tokyo City, uh, local uh, municipal city mayor has used this moderator tool uh, for identifying and also weighting arguments uh, for local municipal priorities. Also, several schools, academic institutions, and local government agencies are uh, referring to this tool as well. Another pathway, as I mentioned, is fact checking. As for fact checking, I have um, uh, illustrated here three different platforms. First is CoFacts, the second is Full fact and the third is fact check. As you see, all these three platforms with links below are fact check platforms. As for CoFact, CoFact is an information checking platform operated through crowd collaboration and chat to have discrete messages of unknown, unknown credibility carefully reviewed and discussed through the joint efforts of the public. CoFact is a really very open collaborative platform. It was first created by Taiwanese civic tech community called Go. Uh, CoFact is building community where everyone plays a part in fact checking. Now this platform also has English language uh, version, also has a Thailand, um, Thai language. Uh, and uh, this platform uh, promotes deliberative capacity in two main ways. First, it promotes inclusiveness by welcoming anyone to become a volunteer editor. And the second cofact promotes authentically by encouraging users to deliberate internally about the outcomes of the fact check. Citizens are really very active agents of this fact checking process and not just readers or listeners. They are either volunteering as editors or actively deliberating on the outcomes of the contested fact check. Cofacts can report users' questions and requests uh, uh, 24 hours, uh, seven days via chatbot. Uh, Cofacts was successfully used in Cofacts some disinformation and especially in Cofacts deepfakes regarding COVID-19 pandemic. And the most popular search topics for 
fact checking. I have just uh, Googled these search uh, topics for COVAX for 2022 and 23 have been COVID-19, Donald Trump, and the child. Uh, another platform is Full Fact. Full Fact is United Kingdom's independent fact-checking organization. The combination of artificial intelligence and human expertise allows Full Fact artificial intelligence users to combat misinformation by maintaining high standards of accuracy and credibility as well. As mentioned on your website, and you can also read this, every day, fact checkers worldwide find, check, and challenge false claims identified by unenabled software produced by dedicated in-house IT. This team has developed a set of tools called Full Fact Artificial Intelligence, which is designed to alleviate the pain points experienced in the fact-checking process. In 2019, the organization was chosen from more than 2,600 nonprofits uh, as a winner of a book Artificial Intelligence Impact Challenge. <coughs> the goal is to create a global collaborative effort to help media outlets, civil society platforms, and public policymakers to really better understand the landscape and to bring the benefits of those tools to everyone. And the set, third platform which I have uh, demonstrated here is FactCheck. FactCheck is also a Georgian platform. It uh, only uses artificial intelligence with a chatbot, but in other, all other data clustering and fact-checking options are uh, made by humans, uh, independent fact-checkers. And they are collaborating with Facebook as well administration and are extremely uh, effective in combating uh, disinformation and propaganda, especially regarding, for example, crime, crime regarding political propaganda, Russian propaganda, and etc. Uh, another example and case which I had analyzed in my study was the French. 2019 Great National Debate. Uh, in test December 2018, President Macron announced launch of the Deliberative Democratic Strategy, the Great National Debate. <coughs> this was a two month process that attempted to involve the whole population into a large scale deliberation process about four broad thematics, including taxation, state services, and organization, ecological transition, democracy, and participation. All these four topics were subject of a protest and really very massive protest in Paris streets uh, the past months before the announcement. The process ultimately led to some policy changes and was crowned by a traditional deliberative process known as the Citizens' Convention for Climate. As it was announced, citizens, elected officials, and institutions, for profit and also non profit organizations, uh, the government wanted to as many people as possible to participate and organize this debate. Each citizen could take initiative of a debate on many of who wish to. So we are able to contribute to this uh, great national debate by organizing or facilitating one or more debate in their municipalities. The debates could be done either in person or with um, uh, use of this online platform. I have a screenshot of this platform. <laughs> By April 2019, more than 109 million French people participated in this process. And there is uh, several statistics. Uh, more than 10,000 local meetings was contacted, for example, and where was artificial intelligence? It can be your question as well. Uh, the company used the hard writing recognition software. This text, which was done as a minutes of debates, were analyzed and classified by Cognito and Blue and Notice. Uh, this was software names. They classified uh, text with multiple questions, online contributions, 
uh, we were entrusted to the survey company as well. Uh, a survey company named Opinion Way was engaged in this process as a partner, uh, and um, also they used artificial uh, intelligence power tool, uh, KWAM. Uh, as you see, this uh, great national debate was one of the largest worldwide uh, debate conducted by means of artificial intelligence power tools and it really had successful results you can see statistics you you uh, we can see that four thematic priorities were identified and policy changes were followed up after the debates and uh, the last but not least uh, uh, we are now moving to I powered online deliberation platforms, which also promotes not only deliberative democracy, but also voting systems as well. And we again move to Stanford Deliberative Democracy Lab. Uh, and there is some functionalities of their artificial intelligence you know, uh, tools, uh, or for example, this tool has closed captioning, screen sharing, question development, language support tools. <clears throat> when you see it at first, it really looks like Zoom platform, but it has like more advanced uh, functionalities such as um, artificial uh, uh, moderator, uh, which moderates uh, all these discussions and uh, ensures equitable participation of all participants. And there is also real-time analytics and scalability. Uh, the functionalities also include speaker management, agenda management, as, a, as well as abuse prevention. There is a safe report system of potential abuse to moderator as well. With the rise of the artificial intelligence, the emerging of online de deliberation platforms have been really very increasing significantly, as we see in this example. Uh, and as we also see, the pioneer, pioneer in this field really was this Stanford online deliberation platform, web-based video platform that facilitated uh, structured and equitable conversation with better opportunity for participants to speak up, moderate constructive discussions on so different civic issues and topics with the use of automated moderator. Um, we see that uh, the automated moderator performs uh, different functions by stimulating participants to, to consider arguments from both sides of all proposals, maintaining civility in the discussion, encouraging equitable participation by all, and providing a structured collaboration phase for participants to come up with a very small set of questions or action items. So artificial intelligence contributes this overcoming dilemma, as we stated in the beginning of our lecture, uh, as the deliberation and mass participation, analysis of existing evidence really misspelled uh, the idea of full inclusive simultaneous deliberation of all with all, even with the using of artificial intelligence tools I powered online deliberation platforms of software. The maximum what we can do, and we can have a substantial percentage of the population engaged in deliberative mini publics or massive amount of self organized citizens engaged in online deliberation platforms. Uh, the French Great National Debate, which I, I had discussed as a case, can be the right illustration of such kind of efforts. And artificial intelligence, we can really say that uh, could also measure and put the quality of deliberation in real time. For example, using a properly adapting index like, uh, and the, there is such kind of index called quality, discourse quality index, which is formulated and calculated with, with the help of artificial intelligence and uh, this original discourse uh, index uh, based on Habermasian discourse ethic theory and employs five indicators of deliberative quality, such as participation equality, 
level of justification. And as we see in Stanford, uh, online deliberation platforms, both uh, functions are available. And there is also respect and constructive politics and abuse prevention is one of the functionalities as we see on the screen. Uh, and uh, and uh, if uh, such kind of indexes drops, artificial intelligence may need to step up its facilitator of fact-checking functions or bring in a humor supervisor. So at this stage, it's not like full functioning ideal mechanism. Uh, it still needs fact-checking additional support mechanism or human supervisor. Now we are moving to uh, artificial intelligence in elections and eye-powered voting systems. What kind of uh, eye-powered technical possibilities can be used in elections? First, I, I, artificial intelligence can provide personalized recommendations on parties or candidates that correspond to voters' political etiquettes. And it is a very popular and I can say most popular tool uh, via artificial intelligence is used, especially in social media platforms uh, during pre-election period, campaigning period. Uh, another tool is campaign apps, a tool for parties to collect data or campaign events, which are analyzed using machine learning. And the third option is eye-powered voting, including biometric identification, such as partial or fingerprint recognition, chat posts, and voice assistance. <coughs> and this is more integrated in several countries. And, and I can show you in cases sections, example of Estonia in this regard. Uh, so some countries which we are using this kind of opportunities have stopped using it uh, as, um, in, due to increased data security concerns. And the uh, example of such country is Norway. And the fourth possibility is artificial intelligence for counting and classifying votes, which is also very useful and a popular tool. I-powered voting systems and usage of artificial Intelligence, as we see in elections, is a topic we are debate is most polarized into two antagonistic ways. Uh, first way, uh, supporters say that artificial intelligence is a democracy contributor, and they see artificial intelligence as a tool uh, of uh, promoting democracy, while uh, the antagonistic group uh, mentions see artificial intelligence as a tool of manipulation, uh, influence of public opinion, especially during election campaign, and loss of control. As our study revealed the importance of focusing on eye-based technical possibilities, which I have discussed in the screen, you can see the visualization to support electoral processes that can be classified into these four categories. But the question still arises, how can high-powered systems be defined in election context? Uh, to answer this question, the Council of Europe and the Alan Turing Institute defines artificial systems as algorithmic models that carry out cognitive and uh, perceptual functions is a word that we are previously reserved for thinking, judging, and reasoning human beings. By analyzing high power technical possibilities in elections, uh, this is all above mentioned four categories can be used in either positive or negative ways. And with exams, we can more deeply understand how each tool can be used either in positive or negative way. Uh, before I move to uh, exams, I would like to introduce to you platformed learning the system. This is germ German model, which categorizes uh, artificial intelligence systems into three different ways. First is elect <coughs> election recommendation applications and tools. The second one is organization of election campaign. And the third one is election forecast. Oh. Sorry, uh, but 
still when we see this kind of opportunity, we can came across to unethical use of artificial intelligence systems uh, to influence, influence voting decisions also into three ways. First can be eye-driven information dissemination. While uh, the automated process of artificial intelligence gives the impression that the behavior originates from a human and therefore pose a high risk of manipulating eligible voters as they can give more validity to this misinformation, as they can associate it, uh, this validate, uh, and validate this information, information as a source of human beings. Another one is personalized content, using of personal profiles in combination with results from behavioral research and personal advertises really increase risk of manipulation. And if you are aware of Facebook and Cambridge Analytical scandal was one of the great example of such kind of uh, unethical use, potential unethical use of artificial intelligence. And the third one is artificial systems defects. Many defects show particularly active persons performing actions or making statements they have never done and never made before. Defects has often strong gender dimension and are the major tool in online violence against women in politics, violence against women in politics, especially against women politicians, women coordinations, coordinators during election campaign and etc. Uh, here we can see how state automated uh, information uh, system of elections operates based on artificial intelligence. It's called SAIS and it's Moldovian experience, um, uh, which uh, can be discussed. Uh, the quality of voter lists and election information management had been really an extended ch challenge in Moldova uh, during the years, especially in 2000. And, um, Tense. Uh, says uh, this, uh, this is elections in Moldovan language is an automated information system which aims to conduct entirely at automated elections in Moldova. The concept sees automatic management as a cost effective tool which at the same time improves control and transparency of the electoral process itself. Says includes the preparation of almost all election related documentation. It can be uh, either voter lists and all relevant doc documents, authorizations and various forms and protocols through this system. <coughs> An important and message module is me to allow voters abroad to vote electronically in the future. This um, uh, functionality is being discussed nowadays really very uh, uh, popular discussion in this. The system also forces equipping of all polling stations with computers and other technology to allow for electronic voting, tabulation of results, and provision of real-time data about voter turnout and results. At the same time, the concept recognizes that a number of legal provisions will have to be amended and introduced before such a system could be put into use. Despite this is really very, it looks really very good tool, really good model. Sorry, still several legislative provisions and changes needed in Moldova to fully uh, realize this model, and uh, which would require significant investments in infrastructure as well and technology. And uh, this recommendation also mentioned in OCA report of 2012 as well. The voter, when arrives uh, at the polling station, uh, we see that it presents an identification document. Operators check the citizen's identity through the computers located at the polling station which are connected to the database of Central Election Commission. 
and determine whether the person voted in a particular election or not. This post 2014 incident, uh, and what was this incident? I will uh, give really very small overview of it. According to Central Election Commission, due to high demand, their server was overloaded and shut down for two hours, uh, which caused a delay in the process on election day by two hours. Uh, and uh, due to this, this delay, SAIS was not functioning in 59% of precincts. SAIS is generally assessed positively uh, despite this incident by international observer missions with its potential to ongoing updating electronic possibility for voting. It should be mentioned that Georgia is also planning to have partially electronic elections in 2024, but uh, use of electronic uh, and artificial intelligence systems will be done only for counting of um, results, not uh, during identification, biometrical identification, or either checking in voter lists or some uh, other funct functions, which was uh, one of key functionalities of SACE, this example, which we have now. This. Also, I I'm really very interested to become familiar how what is planned in Ukraine, and in question and answer sessions also you can share with me uh, the experience what is planning now in Ukraine? Will you have a little full electronic elections or not? Now we can move to another case study. This is artificial intelligence systems in United uh, States voting. As you know, <coughs> in United States, electronic voting is uh, very evident and available. Various types of artificial intelligence powered algorithmic technologies are being used nowadays in United uh, States Election Administration. The use of artificial uh, led algorithms were pioneered in cross state voter role maintenance efforts, including voter purges, which was really very great challenge in USA. In 2005, the Kansas Secretary of State launched the Interstate Voter Registration Crosscheck Program, named Crosscheck. The Crosscheck was data matching system that uh, purported to root out voter fraud. Crosscheck worked by uh, comparing state voters' file and uh, sending participating states a list of voter registration that matched those of another state. In addition to this, a non-profit organization named um, Electronic Registration Information Center, ERIC, uses these algorithm processes as well to assist uh, 30 states and District of Columbia in identifying unregistered individuals and maintaining accurate voter registries. Uh, <coughs> as we see, uh, using artificial intelligence, in voter rollouts it is really very popular in USA. But besides voter role maintain signature machine artificial intelligence uh, is also widely used by many states to validate mail-in ballots. So 29 counties in eight states use signature matching software uh, called Parascript. This software uses signature matching software uh, and machine learning to compare signatures found on mail-in ballots with those in voter files. Algorithms evaluate the certain feature of these signatures, like, for example, their beats, uh, height, uh, symmetry, calligraphy, and straight directions to identify points of similarity. In 2080, the Cambridge Analytica scandal was another case related to USA, uh, if you may be informed during presidential elections and especially uh, for the campaign of Donald Trump, the, uh, the public found out that the data up to 
87 million of Facebook profiles of US citizens were collected without user consent and used for a targeted purposes is a American presidential campaign. And not only for Donald Trump, also for Ted Cruz as well. And uh, <coughs> also uh, Cambridge Analytica was, scandal was also engaged in Brexit referendum as well and elections in over 200 countries around the world. As we see, the influence of artificial intelligence systems is employed by micro-targeted advertisements on social networks, specifically Facebook, targeting voters according to their social, political, and psychological profiles, and relying on big data and machine learning to influence really citizens' emotions and ultimately their choice in polling booths. <coughs> Uh, as we see, this micro targeting uh, advertising, or another name which we can call is automatic electioneering, run with the risk of leading to a restricted political offer on a social networks and potentially distorting electorate behavior and to the supposed outcome of the election. Uh, now, uh, besides uh, the cases, I would also like to introduce with you personalized recommendation, voter recommendation apps. Uh, this is German app. I, I don't know whether I pronounce it correctly, Wah or Matt. Uh, this is, the, as I mentioned, personalized recommendation apps. And as we have mentioned in the beginning, Personalized recommendation apps is one of the most popular tools which can artificial intelligence power tools which can be used during elections. Recommendation tools uh, such as Wahomat are known as voting advice application or with another name as well. These are examples of how artificial intelligence systems could be used in the run-up to future elections. Currently, these systems contain only a few automated processes and hardly any machine-based learning processes. In the future, further developments toward learning systems are really convincible. There is already chatbot <coughs> in this application. And uh, since 2002, this application has been used as an interactive online informational tool by the Federal Agency for Political Education. The aims of this application are to inform users about political issues and differences between the parties running for elections and encourage follow-up communication about politics and ultimately motivate people to vote. Even it encourages communication, follow-up communication, even with candidates. So it's really very useful and mainly used also very in by young people, young generation, and it can it is a best practice that can be taken into consideration uh, by Eastern European countries as well. And the last example of I voting is I voting in Estonia, as you see on the on the screen, uh, the amount of I voters in uh, participating voters is increasing year by year. Uh, there is statistics from 2005 to 2027. Uh, in 2003 and 2004, expert groups presenting this i-voting scheme, which is now, uh, nowadays functioning in Estonia, and internet voting security analysis for Estonia. Since 2005, Estonia officials started implementing the electronic voting system in municipal elections and become the first country ever to provide such kind of opportunity to vote via internet to citizens throughout the country. Uh, according to the Estonian model, the process of voting via internet is uh, first to vote, citizens to sign up for voting application, and connect to the program by inserting their ID cards, identification cards, into a special te a technical device, 
Estonia so-called the i-voting system uses a double electronic envelope uh, where the voter choice is uh, recorded on the inner envelope and the citizen's digital signature is placed on the outer envelope. So it's a double in, uh, electronic in envelope used. Estonia implemented voter verification for individual voters in 2013. Uh, uh, 13 uh, voters verify their ballots by using a smartphone application, which uses a QR code displayed by the desktop voting client to display the candidate for whom the vote was cast. Individual verification verifies that the vote cast was stored on the vote collection server for not more than the either 30 or 60 minutes, depending on the election. The voter cannot directly verify that the vote was also uh, tallied as cast. <coughs> and now we are moving to public opinion analysis. This is also a very big area where we are eye powered tools are used. And what kind of uh, opportunities does artificial intelligence can bring to public opinion? analysis. First, it informs experts, researchers, and decision makers to better address the challenges faced by the citizens' attitudes and help developing solutions based on target groups' needs. Another one, as I already mentioned in the Liberative Democracy section, was fact-checking fact opportunity. By using high-powered tools to monitor and analyze content, researchers can gain a better understanding of um, sources and dissemination patterns of false information, which can ultimately help to inform strategies for combating its spread and influence on public opinion. Artificial uh, intelligence also uh, can be used as a monitoring tool, especially for uh, monitoring social media mentions. And I will uh, introduce one case, uh, one platform regarding this, and also another way to use artificial intelligence into public opinion analysis. First, high powered analysis can disseminate stereotypes and biased information if ethical considerations and social cultural determinants were not considered during tested stage. <clears throat> this is one of the topic which is in which uh, artificial intelligence tools are most criticized by feminist scholars, for example, and by, for example, intersectional feminist analysts, we see that mainly uh, machine learning is based on the discourse and content made by men and uh, sometimes excludes consideration of women as a target, women as a decision maker. So it can uh, provide more gender biased information if it is not uh, tested properly during testing te stage. Another challenge is uh, that monitoring and supervision mechanisms is needed with international and national guidelines and frameworks. And uh, one of such examples is Council of Europe's legal framework. To avoid manipulation and ensure ethical and rice based uh, uh, eye powered public opinion analysis. Uh, as we see day by day, eye powered social media analytics also become more and more popular for public opinion monitoring in politics as well. Uh, as we, as artificial intelligence use natural language processes and machine learning algorithms in public opinion analysis and uh, transform traditional approaches. <laughs> Plus, NLP and machine learning algorithms enable to analyze of data from various sources such as social media platforms, news articles, online forums, and to identify trends and patterns in, in public sentiments. And unlike traditional methods of surveys and research, eye driven analysis can provide more objective and comprehensive view of public attitudes by analyzing a broader range of data sources and minimizing uh, the impact of these biases. Despite, as I mentioned, gender biases can be still relevant. By analyzing this data, I powered tools can provide valuable insights into the 
factors that shape public opinion and help decision makers better understand needs and concerns of their constituents. Uh, now, <coughs> first, the platform that you all may know is ChatGPT, and ChatGPT4 uh, has a functionality for public opinion analysis, eye powered polling, and sentiment tracking. I will not stop on this case because, as I have seen in agenda in upcoming sessions, we will have a session on ChatGPT, Chet so you will be. Uh, and I also will be able to more deeply become familiar with this functionality platforms as well. Uh, so I will use this opportunity to uh, discuss with you deliberative polling case and there is uh, the mechanisms of deliberative polling, which you can see on the screen. Uh, uh, this uh, deliberative polling uh, system is taken uh, from a deliberative Stanford University University deliberative polling model, uh, and as you see, it uh, makes random selection of sample, then uh, automatically distributes uh, into small groups people and uh, provides a digital polling and weighting arguments with deliberative manner. Another uh, example I can introduce with you is Mentialytics. Mentialytics is a social media mentions platform, I powered social media monitoring tool, and their mission is to provide vast amount of information automatically without need for complex queries on Google or social media services, presenting everything in one very easy uh, to use interface. Uh, and it applies sentiment analysis, automatically classifies each new mentions to positive, negative, or neutral. And it has media monitoring, social listening, review monitoring, social intelligence, uh, and the customized social media reports features as well, which is really very clear and actionable insights. And it has also some publishing tools and features. <laughs> and it has specialized suggestions for private sector, for civil society organizations, and for government agencies as well. And now we are moving to our last topic. It's community involvement platforms. Uh, we see that sustainable development goals, uh, namely SDG 167, ensuring responsive, inclusive, participatory, and representative decision making at all levels, provides a vision how the artificial intelligence powered community involvement initiatives can leverage uh, these data driven technologies to actively engage citizens in various community related activities. It can be either local government processes, voting as a, on community projects, proposing initiatives, and etc. I have uh, discussed here, I have uh, visualized here different examples such as community issues prioritization, uh, community driven urban planning, and smart neighborhoods, and idea generations, environmental monitoring and reporting, personalized recommendations, civic chatbots and etc. There are several examples and especially citizen lab are uh, one of the leading uh, lab which are uh, tailoring and piloting several such kind of community involvement initiatives. As we see, I technologies can empower citizens with information facilitate collaboration with governments and lead more informed, engaged, and active participation in civic life. However, it's really very crucial to implement artificial intelligence in a way that ensures data privacy, fairness, and accountability. And to involve citizens in the development and oversight of high-powered civic participation initiatives to build trust and uh, transparency. I try to very briefly overview the key learnings from the research I have conducted uh, and to sum up this uh, uh, 
high power technologies can be used either in positive way or negative way with citizen participation mechanism. And uh, as we have mentioned, we can use several tools and platforms as a voting systems, public opinion analysis, deliberative democracy discussions, uh, and tools as well as community involvement platforms. So I'm really looking forward now to your questions. Uh, if you have any question, please raise your hand or write in the chat and I will try my best to provide my opinion, vision and also evidence-based feedback. Thank you very much once again for your attention. Um, please, if you 